I see Mark and his queen. Oh, crass. Crass, Mark and his queen, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> see, now that's got pollen on it, yes? Yeah. But there she is, and she's a big girl. Yeah, she's pretty. Hey. Today, I'm just doing a little bit of work around the place. The season for splitting is coming up very soon. Today, it's the 17th of February. Just got off work, ready to do just a little bit of stuff here. And when I start splitting, I'm gonna need a lot more of these five frame boxes that I'm working on now. So I do them a little bit differently than a lot of people do. So I just thought I'd show you how I do. Basically what I do is I take two by eight material. I buy this in the, uh, in the eight foot board length and I cut three quarter by three quarter inch dados. This is a little different than what a lot of people do. This is slightly deeper. So when my frames are sitting on the shelf in these side of these boxes, this is gonna be slightly deeper down than it would in a standard hive, standard colony. But the reason I do that is I'm not using inner covers and telescoping lids on these boxes. They have flat lids. So I wanna have just a little bit more space here and that way I can put a beetle barn up here or a pollen patty if I need to. Some people con are concerned. Some people have said, oh, you're gonna get ladder comb up here. So far, it hasn't been a problem. But this two by eight size, five frames fit beautifully in a two by eight size. Now, traditionally you'd, you'd buy one inch boards, which is actually three quarter inch, but this thicker stuff is actually cheaper. And so that's the way I'm doing it. It's almost time to fill up my glue pot again. <laughs> the key to doing this is to get them flush at the top of the board. If they're a little bit off at the bottom, I'll trim that off later and shave it down. But having it flush at the top is the key to making these, board, these things. These are uh, inch and a half brad nails I use. I do this pretty simple way. These sides, these are just regular ply, plywood. They're three quarter inch plywood. And um, to keep the cost down, I'm getting scrap woods and stuff as much as I can. But I cut this 10 inches tall by 22 inches long. And simple dimensions for simple guy, simple boards, you know, but um, doing this way really lets me make these things cheap and easy.
Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with these, so not too hard to do. And you can see they fit pretty well, so five of these will go in just fine. And um, so dimensions 10 inches tall by 22 inches long, three quarter inch grooves up here. This works out well. Okay. So the next step is I dip my boxes in this. Now I always call this tall earth because they used to mark it as tall earth uh, echo wood treatment. I'm sure it's the same stuff. You can get this at Man Lake, but I bought this at Amazon. It's not super cheap, but it's good stuff, and so a package like this will make up a gallon. So this is what I had left. It's kind of good to stir it a little bit. There's a two-gallon bucket here. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. I've got this old rag in here. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this up. And Put in a gallon of water. So this stuff's claim to fame is that it's non-toxic, doesn't hurt the bees, and I can dip my woodworks right in there and supposedly it'll make my, my woodwork last a lot longer. So I'm just gonna dump this in the tub and then I take each one of my boxes Put it in there, and I get my rag. And I just let this stuff go all over the place. put it on with a paintbrush. You could do other things. This seems to work well for me. Got kind of an organic smell to it. It's not bad. I know I'm just making these out of plywood, and so they're not gonna last real long. I mean, I'm not expecting to get 20 years out of these boxes, 
with the plywood sides, but this tall wood should give me a little bit longer life. So it's worth it for me to do this. Okay, so when I get done, all I'm gonna do now is I'm going to let those sit up here and dry for a couple of days, for a day, I should say. So tomorrow is Saturday and I'll be able to go from there. Now, if you use this stuff, you don't wanna leave it in a tub like this because it'll evaporate quick. So all I do is I put that rag in that I was using, I dump it in the bucket, And then I seal it up and it's ready for next time. And that's how I do that. It's 75, 78 degrees out here right now and so I'm hot and sweaty, I've been working. But these bees, I think what they're doing is telling me that I haven't opened up the, the entrance. It's still on my winter size entrance. They only got the half inch entrance. So they're all just kind of hanging up outside. Hope they don't decide to swarm on me. <laughs> hey. Okay, so these boxes are just about finished. Just doing a little bit of oops paint on them, making them battleship gray. And the idea is that I want to um, put paint in the places where the bees are not going to be. Because on the inside of the box, they're going to propolize up everything. And they'll make their own antiseptic barrier on the inside of the box. So I'm just doing the final step of preserving the wood of these things. This is just the first coat. I'll do two, maybe even three coats, depending on how it looks when I'm done. I'll put it on pretty thick. Okay, here are those four boxes I, bait, I did. Now, they're not going to win any awards for beauty, but these are my boxes. Now, obviously, these are tops, and you can use them as, as a second-story five-frame nuke, but I'll show you on another video how I do the bottoms. All right, that's about it for today.